it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are focusing in and diving into a very important topic that can help you rise above after being in an encounter, a relationship, an experience, a situation with a emotionally abusive and wounding type of individual, such as we see exemplified by a narcissist, a borderline, or a psychopath. And real quick, I know I am kind of creating these into a lump of cluster B personality disorders and resultant for the viewership here, the community, who are those people who have encountered these bizarre, hurtful, and isolating sort of relationships and how to recover from them. And in the topic of this video, I want to really focus in on the aspect of feeling alone, isolated, or withdrawn as a resultant reaction to being emotionally abused by these individuals. And real quick, we're just gonna go into what does emotional abuse mean? Emotional abuse is when, it, when someone is using emotions, behavior, treatment, and cognitions to treat people in destructive, negative, and harmful ways. Let's keep it simple. If you were to look at physical abuse, you would know it outright. You would know it's a behavior, it's easy to be seen. But the result is hurt, damage, crippling, and it creates a, um, a uh, degeneration of that person. Um, it creates a, a, a destruction or a hurt or a wound of that per person. Likewise, emotional abuse is the same thing, except it is done with words, emotions, slander, and m mistreatment of that individual. So that the resultant effect is one of hurt, woundedness, scarring, a feeling of a ongoing injury um, as a result of being with this person. And that might take the shape, uh, the shape of um, intrusive thoughts where this person can't stop thinking about this person. Um, and this is fueled by fear, worry, and concern, uncertainty. Um, you know, the walking on eggshells where they constantly feel like they have to keep thinking about this person not only to prevent their outburst, but to protect themselves. The feeling of like, I don't know what to do. Um, so they, you know, it's this, these intrusive thoughts, these in, in, um, incessant thoughts, and then um, compulsions for how to then either how to please them, how to pacify them, how to acquiesce, how to stop the abuse from happening. So there's this kind of obsessive and compulsive sort of um, reaction to them. Um, and then there is also the gaslighting, the feeling of uncertainty, um, not knowing, you know, mistrusting one's thoughts, mistrusting one's feelings, um, having a, uh, a sense of like, I can't ascertain whether what I'm doing is right or wrong. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to be. I don't know who to be. I don't know how to act. I don't know how to react. This feeling of disorientation, uh, the feeling of terror. Uh, just feeling, basically feeling afraid at the negative energy. Uh, it's such a pervasive abyss of negative energy that it often feels like a darkness. It feels like a cloud. It feels like a tension or it feel might even feel like a sting around this person. So it's a resultant feeling of, 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 of trauma and of pain and fear. So a lot of these negative um, you know, feelings, which are all really balled up into one. Um, the feeling of you know not being able to uh, think straight, uh, not being able to make make decisions, uh, feeling indecisive, uh, feeling afraid, feeling um, like they just want to give up. Um, sometimes we become people feel very suicidal, you know, or really just don't don't know where to turn for help. And the the point is that you do need to get out of that situation and reach out for help. Say I'm here. This is going on. Please help me. And this is what we call emotional abuse. And um, emotional abuse, um, one of the effects is that of being withdrawn or isolated. So feeling, um, you know, really as uh, lost, I would say, and feeling like they don't know, someone doesn't know where to turn or they are so uh, rendered incapable or feeling helpless or, you know, their emotions are so degenerated and, you know, um, are collapsing that they don't know where to turn. They don't have the energy. They don't know how to reach out, who to re reach out to. And um, this can be very um, isolating and it can cause people to live a w feeling withdrawn. 
So I'm afraid to go and talk to people, uh, afraid to smile, afraid to say hello. You know, people become very timid, very shaky, very nervous. Um, you know, you, you, you don't want to find out what happened to me. Um, you're never going to believe this. Like, I'm so wounded right now, I can barely do this or I can barely do that. I can barely smile. I can barely make my bed. I can barely do my chores. I can barely make friends. Um, a lot of these feelings which are basically like a complex PTSD where um, these symptoms are very similar to those people who have encountered um, acts of war, acts of terrorism, who have gone out to fight for their country and have witnessed um, you know, very extreme conditions, um, extreme hate, uh, prejudice, bias, um, you know, uh, physical violence. Um, you know, they have a, a resultant uh, shock um, and it really is like an overload in the system. Excuse me, I have something in my eye. Um, and so this can be very resultant in feelings of, of being withdrawn and isolated and feeling very lonely. And so this again is, um, and I, I, I discuss this in a lot of videos, how important it is to use the role of metacognition and really to determine if this is happening to you. If it is, be rigorously honest with yourself and say, wow, you know, this relationship has had an undue effect on me. One that I'm not very pleased with. Um, I did not deserve this. I did not cause this. I did not invite this into my life, but I found myself in this situation and we're gonna call it an encounter. An encounter, a situation. Oftentimes, you know, there, these really aren't relationships. They were relationships for a while, but it becomes more of an experience or an endurance that you have e experienced. And really, um, if you can alchemize it, which means transform it, um, transform from the negative to the positive using alchemy to say, okay, this was a negative experience, but it has made me wiser. It has made me become more attentive to myself. And I'm now going to reparent this wounded individual inside. I'm going to use my maturity. I'm going to use my care and my love to guide this wounded personality and this experience from me and I'm now going to key into that and realize that I did not cause this it was not because I'm a terrible person it is because I was in in around an abusive person so don't equate that you are a bad person because you have encountered this realize that these people you know basically strive to infl inflict hurt and wounds into others to feel superior or better than and so if you're on the receiving end okay stop stop being you know on the receiving end get away detach get you know even if it doesn't seem logical even if you don't want to even this is what you didn't want for your life even though you didn't think this was going to happen even though you didn't deserve this even though you know there was nothing you did to bring this into being it is what it is and let it go. It is what it was. It, you know, that had occurred, but now you've got time, life, other types of people, other types of experiences, other types of emotions to enrich and live in now. So, you know, come to that mindfulness and realize that, you know, that, um, that wounding, you know, ex exists within that person and, you know, they target and, uh, will find others to project that onto. Now, if you get out of the way of that, you know, you will find that, um, you know, not only do you have that recovery phase where you're recovering from it, but then where you really begin to get a solid foundation of, of protection and that is created by boundaries and getting a new template and a new blueprint for your life that isn't just a role as it relates to the identity of this person, but as it relates to you, your interests, what you find fun, interesting, etc. So... You know, um, begin to color your life with a little bit different flair than that which had been um, really driven you into a feeling of isolation or withdrawal because that is a resultant cause, um, that is a resultant effect of that cause. So now it's not that you're an isolated, withdrawn person, it's a temporary state. So rather than, you know, claiming that as your, your new identity, I am helpless, I am a victim. I am worthless, I am done, I am done with, I am, you know, I am all these negative things. Stop using that negative self-talk and that negative reactionary sort of uh, uh, lifestyle that has created, been created from that and learn to pick up the pen and put pen to paper and rechart your course, get a new map for your life. 
um, one that doesn't involve all this isolation and withdrawal. You'll find that, you know, a lot of people in life have been through traumatic situations and they have learned from it and they can share it with you with kind of a nostalgia. So begin to put kind of a, a nostalgia onto what happened. Um, you know, you didn't want it, you didn't call it into being, it is what it is. A higher force is here to give you the lessons of life and put, you know, your finer emotions into play. Um, so I would learn to give a sense of nostalgia, um, you know, of, a, of it belonging to the past, of an era gone by, of a chapter that once was, but there's so much more to that book of your life. There's so much more to the world. Um, you know, I would say look onto the great acts of, of life. You know, look into the great painting, the um, Sistine Chapel. Um, go and look at this, you know, the skyline of a beautiful city, um, a majestic mountain. Um, go and learn about, you know, a, a, an ecosystem that is, has fascinated you or, you know, a, a type of industry that has fascinated you. And you will see that there's always been trials, you know, fi, uh, trials and successes, trials and successes, failures and successes. And it is all the evolution that this is part of. And um, even though this uh, sometimes is a tough lesson, you look at it with kind of a nostalgia and look at it kind of as, as giving it sort a sort of richness and a humbleness um, to your character. Um, use it to enrich your character and realize that you stand with dignity and liberty and, you know, you begin to really, you know, have your, you know, have your presence about you and give yourself the respect that the narcissist never gave you. Give yourself the love that the narcissist or psychopath, you know, never gave you. Give yourself those things that they never gave, that they never gave you and stop looking to them for that. Stop looking to them to fill the void. Break that cycle. Learn to give yourself that very item, that very feeling, that very experience with which they could not give you. And you'll find that you can replace and you can fill that void if you'll only allow yourself. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion and support.